So prior to the publishing of the Red Book and now the Black Books, most readers would have known Jung through his collected works, which had been published a, a long time earlier. And people had, I think, a perception of who Jung was, both as a contributor to the science of psychology, but also as a person, as a human being. The Jung family, if I understand correctly, was very protective about keeping the Red Book and the Black Books private. They had it in a vault. They were concerned about the work being distributed. What do you think made them feel so cautious about bringing this material forward? And how might people's perception of Jung be different now that they can read these things? Well, I think if you look at the level of the literature written on Jung and the level of what is written on Jung in so-called biographies, I think one would be find it quite sensible to be cautious uh, concerning Jung's public reception and the lack of, um, at that time, historical work into Jung and the amount of myths, uh, gossip, and fantasy that circulated. Mm -hmm. So um, vis-a-vis the Red Book, when I started my research on it and uh, found certain transcriptions and brought them to the attention of the Jung uh, estate. At that stage, I, I had edited his seminar on Kundalini Yoga, so I had been in contact with him and had begun discussing the whole question of what to do with the vast cache of Jung's manuscripts, which had only recently been um, catalogued. I mean, it, it's quite striking mm -hmm. that the collected works was formally sort of deemed finished in 1976, but the, the first almost complete catalog of his manuscripts was only done in 1993. Wow. And so I was in conversations with him as to what to do with that material. At that stage, no one alive in the family had, had read the Red Book. They basically asked, you know, what's in it and what's it about? So again, there are, there are myths of censorship that were floating around in the Jungian world, uh, but no one had actively considered it. And so that was, you could say, an opportune moment. And when it came under consideration, it was quite clear on the one hand that this was a work, though not published, was written for publication. Mm -hmm. There were certain copies in circulation and that Jung had left stipulations, both regarding the red and the black books, uh, that were in a way quite similar to the date stipulations with his correspondence with Freud, namely that it should be put in an archive made available, say, after 10, 20, I mean, 20, 30 or odd years or so. And that it also constituted the basis of the collected works. So when that was considered in in that light, uh, they decided to release it for publication based on the proposals that, that I'd prepared. 